journalist and a filmmaker, Sharmeen Obed Chinoy is best known for winning Pakistan's first Oscar for her documentary, Saving Face, which is a powerful look inside Pakistani society, telling stories of two acid attack survivors. Her work focuses on human rights and women issues. For her work in the field of documentary films, she has been awarded highest civil honor Hilale Imtiaz by Government of Pakistan. And she has also received Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal by Canadian Government. She has won two Academy Awards, six Emmy Awards, and is one of the 11 female directors who have ever won Oscar for a non-fiction film. Let's hear from her about her childhood and early life. I was born and raised in Karachi, Pakistan, and uh, my childhood up until I went to college uh, was spent in Karachi. Um, I think uh, it was an idyllic time to be growing up in Karachi in the 1990s where, um, you know, we would still, uh, I'm the eldest of six children, uh, we would uh, bike uh, on the streets, uh, there would be explore, you know, our parents would encourage us to explore the city, the beach. Um, I learned, um, I went to school in Sadar, so I got to see uh, the old um, part of Karachi and I think that uh a few things that my parents did which were very important for me as a girl were they inculcated me in me the need for competition playing sports so i played uh, tennis up, uh, up until i was 16 i i played um, junior level professional tennis for pakistan um, and they encouraged us to play as many sports as possible um, and so we would spend often between after 3 p.m outside on the streets uh, playing uh, with my siblings and those around me what were your hobbies as a child? I love to read a lot. In fact, uh, uh, we were members of three libraries in the city and we would go once a week. My mother would take us to the, to the libraries and we would spend um, a couple of hours choosing books and then we would spend the entire week reading those books. Um, I think uh, my love for reading, my love for exploring uh, history, for understanding um, gender violence, uh, justice for women, all came from the books that I picked up at the British Council Library, the Karachi Jimkhana Library, the Defense Housing Authority Library. I spent a lot of time and a lot of afternoons there. Um, in fact, it was probably one of my my most favorite uh, things to do. Um, we were a close-knit fa family, so uh, my parents spent a lot of time with us. Um, we, uh, on Sundays or on Fridays, before it became Sundays, we would drive around the city. Um, trying out food from various dhabas. My father had a great love for food, and that has been passed down into our generation. So I have to say that my father raised us as very strong girls who could take on the world, always telling us that it was possible for us to do anything we wanted to do. And my mother encouraged us to pursue those dreams, um, to go to college, then to go to graduate school, and, and to work. How did you develop interest in journalism, filmmaking, and activism? And how did one lead to another? I think my earliest memory of um, thinking that the world um, had uh, different opportunities for different people was when I was 10 years old and I was going to school and my car had stopped at a traffic light. And I looked out of the window and I saw a young girl. She was about 10 and she had her nose pressed against the window and her hand stretched out and she was barefoot and she was begging. And I remember thinking that why is she not going to school? Why am I in a uniform and I'm going to school? And, and I would often ask my mother and my teachers and those around me these difficult questions, which no one had the answer to. And then one day when I was 14 and I was asking my mother some particularly difficult questions and being quite persistent, she um, encouraged me to put those questions out to other people, to begin to write for newspapers, she said. Why don't you write for newspapers and put out your questions uh, to uh, other people? And so at the age of 14, I began writing for the news newspaper and for Dawn in Pakistan, the English language newspapers. Um, and by the time I was 17, I was writing undercover investigative stories for the Tuesday Review for Dawn. Um, I think as I began to become a journalist, I began to explore and understand and question people of authority. Um, 
and that led me to understand that there are great inequalities in our country and the vision that um, Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan, had for Pakistan, for its women, for its society, were not being implemented, that we had steered far away from them. And, um, you know, I began to develop a sense of activism through my journalism. Um, and when I was uh, 18, I, I um, wrote a news, uh, I wrote an article for Dawn Tuesday Review um, that led me into a lot of trouble where the men I'd written about and the boys I'd written about wanted to teach me a lesson and they spray painted my name with unspeakable profanities on our front gate in our neighborhood, uh, around uh, our area. They thought that they could silence me because in the culture that we come from, uh, when you shame a family, you silence them. But, you know, my father said something to me that has always stayed with me, um, which is, if you speak the truth, I will stand with you, and so will the world. And then my father whitewashed those walls. And I've always known that it's important to speak the truth, that it's not easy to speak the truth, that people will always throw stuff at you. But you must persevere, you must continue, and you must move on. And that is extremely important to fight for the vision of Pakistan that your forefathers left their homes for. How did the transition happen from journalism to more visual language, to break barriers and fighting discrimination, particularly documenting violence against women in Pakistan? I uh, was a print journalist when I was in college uh, in America at Smith College, and then 9-11 happened, and I began to think about doing something more visual. And uh, I just picked up a camera one day and I began to document the, uh, the lives of young Afghan children on the streets of Karachi because when the October 2001 bombing started in Afghanistan, many parents sent their children to Pakistan to survive. And I, I thought it was important um, to tell the stories of these children, what they were going through as they were living living and working and finding ways to make ends meet. And um, I sort of became an accidental filmmaker, as I like to call myself. Being a filmmaker and working on one of the critical societal issues like child abuse, issues of gun violence, water scarcity, domestic violence, land grabbing, in a very male-dominant society. So what struggles did you face in your career? When you hold up a mirror to society, um, and people don't like to see the reflection of themselves, then there is always going to be blowback. People are always going to uh, want to um, make sure that they silence you. And that's what's happened with my work. I hold up a mirror to society. I force people to talk about difficult issues from acid violence to honor killings to child marriage to rape to incest. And nobody wants to uh, believe that that is happening in our society and nobody wants to acknowledge it. And so instead of fighting to change the reality for women, instead of fighting to make better laws, instead of fighting to uh, make sure that women are safe, a lot of male misogynistic men um, instead target me because it's easier for them to target me. But change will always come when we stand up for women who are more than 50% of our population, when we protect them, when we amplify their voices, when we give them wings to fly. And I will always fight to make sure that that happens because my favorite Kaide Azam quote is that there are two strengths in the world, the sword and the pen. But there is a third one that is, might that is mightier than those two and that is the strength of a woman. And it's important to do that. Your work is incredible powerful and very courageous. How has the support from your family and community been towards your career? My support has been tremendous. Um, my parents have always encouraged me to ask questions. Um, we, uh, my family has always believed that women and men are equal, that uh, we must be given equal opportunity to excel. And I think that uh, that has allowed me to have a voice in society and not be afraid to say the things that I want to say. What is your message for other women and girls? I want to tell young girls today that they can do whatever they put their heart to. 
that if a door has not opened for them, it's because they haven't kicked it hard enough. And they must, must pursue their dreams. They must fly because it is important for their well-being to become the women that they dream of becoming and that they must continue to fight until they do. Film has the power to change the way we think about ourselves and our culture. Thank you for your great courage and compassion for others around you. Charmina Bechinoy, award-winning journalist and filmmaker.